This is a program about going deeper. It's about creating a culture of learning. It's about putting apostolic feet to prophetic hope. It is our mission to purposefully equip the world to transform their region with God's love. We want to create an atmosphere of divine influence to the nations by walking in the power of His Holy Spirit with a faith that shapes the future. Welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. Hey everyone, welcome to Eagle Mountain Radio. My name is Chris. I'll be your host today. I've got two unbelievably amazing guests on today. I'm so excited to talk to them. We've got Johnny Enlow, who has been on the program a lot recently. Johnny, so good to have you here today with us as well. Johnny, what is the weather like today for you? I'm just very curious. Well, you know, it, we still have some snow left over from yesterday. Okay. Okay. We had, a high, we had a high of 30 and we had snow drifts, oh, I think, of six to eight inches um, oh, three days after 79 degrees. So oh, now we're, about, we're back up into the 50s today. So we're oh, just experiencing goodness. a little bit of everything here. Things are, things are happening. Oh, my goodness. And then we have Dave Hodgson, who's coming to us from Australia. So thank you for getting up early with us, <laughs> Dave. Appreciate that. So how is the weather there? I know there's been some crazy weather from you guys as well. Yeah, well, I live in Queensland, and uh, this is where the floods were. But behind me, it's a beautiful sunny day. That's live behind me. I'm in my boardroom. Um, the floods were a bit hectic. My son lost his house. The water went right above the roof on a, oh on a, like a double story type house and uh, flooded 10 acres and drowned all the sheep and so on. So it was a bit oh of a sad day. That's horrible. But uh, they're all cleaning up and recovering. So Australia's used to it. So it's all good. Wow. Now, is that is that uncharacteristic or is that like, is that a normal thing? It's un, it's it's uncharacteristic in that it came above the hundred year flood line. We have a Q one hundred line on the as a contour on various residential property, you know, all throughout all the uh, counties, and uh, it came way above that. So wow, yeah, th there's lots of reasons. Probably, you know, people put it down to climate change, perhaps, but there's also a lot more development, and that that clogs yeah. up waterways and and drainage yeah. and so on that it banks up and people get flooded. So yeah. wow. Man, that morning, is, wow. um, crazy, crazy times. Um, well, I'm glad that um, they're okay, um, safety wise. Mm -hmm. And then I just, you know, not everybody's familiar with Dave, um, but I just wanted to introduce Dave. Dave is the CEO yeah. and founder of Paladin Corporation. That is a global company that's in a lot of different verticals, including mining and telco construction, IT, health and wellness. And he's also the founder, I think it was 2007 that you founded Kingdom Investors or right around there. And that is a global um, min uh, marketplace ministry, which is uh, just incredible. And I know in the last several years with Kingdom Investors, you've really um, started to kind of hit stride and momentum. There's a lot of people connecting, a ton of learning that's happening, and you're making a lot of powerful inroads um, with all the businesses. But, you know, with Kingdom Investors, it's just been incredible to watch that and everything that you guys are doing. So thank you for spending some time with us. Um, just excited to to dig into this. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's got something. Well, yeah, this is early on, but we should point out that uh, he has an incredible past besides that. Um, I don't even know how much I can totally remember, but I know <laughs> that Dave was, I believe, born in what is now Zimbabwe, or he, at least he lived there a long time, Rhodesia, and he was in special forces there. And and then, you know, ended. I don't know how much of this he continues to tell, but I'm telling it anyway. And I had to become a, a mercenary at some point. And then, you know, he was invited out of that country. And so he has made Australia his nation for, I don't know how many decades now, many, many decades. Was I right on some of those things right there, Dave? Yeah, pretty accurate, Johnny. You've got a better memory than me, mate. But uh, all of the above, plus a stint of four years as a saturation diver in Southeast Asia and Japan, <laughs> trying to get into Australia. So we got here in 1986. So I've been an Aussie longer than I was a Rhodesian. And, and from what I hear, and from one video I happen to see on your cell phone, an unbelievably accurate marksman with um, a bow and arrow, archery. Like incredible. <laughs> like incredible. Uh, that's that's the funny thing. That's the thing that we're we're battling with Dave Yarns about. 
he was bleating about how how good he was with his bow shooting deer from 30 meters and we were shooting balloons little balloons small ones at 100 meters <laughs> and he he thought it was an edited setup but it's not it's, it's uh, a fact. it looked authentic to me not 100 yeah. feet 100 meters so for those yeah. of you who don't know that's like a football field here in the u.s that is unreasonably far dave <laughs> <laughs> it was fun with him he's a good guy <laughs> uh, that's so cool that's so cool well thank you for spending some time um one of the things that i'm super excited about is dave is actually one of the speakers at this upcoming event and the talk that you're going to be giving is infiltrate to remediate is that correct and um i'm super pumped to hear this talk i don't want you to go into the whole thing because i want to save it for um the actual event but can you give us just a high level like what when you talk about infiltrate to remit remiterate, um, what are you going after there? Yeah, so the, the we, we need strategic plans as Christians. It's no good just going to church on Sunday and thinking that's going to bring the kingdom of God into the earth. And there's a lot coming against the kingdom of God into the earth. And, you know, it, it, we appear to be largely outnumbered and so on. Now, I know from being in the, in the special forces that you can win no matter how outnumbered you are, if you have the right training, the right strategies and so on. And that was without the Holy Spirit. So now here we are, you know, with the kingdom of God, the institution of the kingdom of God behind us. And we've got seven mountains of culture to, to take, to take control of, to, in, to influence. So how are we going to do that? And I know from my time in a, in a special forces unit called the Salu Scouts, when I was, where I was actually trained to become the enemy, I became the enemy. I was trained as a terrorist, became a terrorist, infiltrated the terrorist ranks, not, not just me, lots of us, uh, those of us that could speak indigenous languages and live off the bush and so on. So we did that and we were able to infiltrate their ranks and remediate them from communism because they were communist terrorists, Charlie Tango as we called them, or Ters. And we could change their mindset. The objective was to either change their mindset or cull them, okay, to win the war. But you don't win the war just by killing people. You've got to occupy. And we need to occupy these seven mountains of culture. And so we must infiltrate them and change the culture that is there running those mountains. If we go in there and try and kill everyone on those mountains, we're not going to be able to do it. And if we did do it without changing the culture, it would be a... Uh, we would more would grow up because we never changed the culture. We didn't properly occupy. So I found that I, I took what I learned in the special forces and brought it into the spiritual warfare that we um, live under now and applied it to the marketplace because that's primarily where I operate in the mountain of economics or mountain of business. And I obviously have a reach, a lot of reach into the mountain of politics and the mountain of education, academia. Okay, so and to some extent media. So I need to infiltrate those mountains and change the culture from the inside. And it's it's rife throughout the Bible. We just skip over it. We don't dig deep enough, I think, into the history and the, and the contemporary times of, say, Nehemiah. How did how did he get? How did he become the king's cupbearer? He's an enemy. He's a Jew, and yeah. yet he's a you know, a cupbearer for a king, and and that's a position of massive trust because the, most most assassinations of kings in those days were done through poisoning. Right. And here's Nehemiah, who's who's a Jew, and yet he's trusted so much with the kings, and it came with massive, you know, his wages were enormous because of the trust. They had to virtually bribe the trust into these people. Yeah. So it wasn't in their interest to kill the king because otherwise then their, their, their income would fall apart. Right. He took that income and used it to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem. And when he got there, he changed the culture in Jerusalem, which was totally corrupt anyway. Yeah. So the point being, by infiltrating, he did so much. And I didn't mention any of this, I don't think, in my lecture, so it's not taking from that. But there's so many examples. There's Esther, there's Daniel, you know, Joseph revamped the whole economy of Egypt. And, and not only did he revamp it, he changed their, their, their opulent character of blowing everything. Keep in mind, when he, uh, when he got there, you know, he taxed them 20% of so much money, so much grain and, and seven years of abundance. He taxed them 20% and that 20% collapsed the accounting system. Okay, so that's how abundant it was. But everybody else had 80%, which was four times as much. And they blew it within two years. They blew what, what crashed the accounting system within two years. Right. So the opulent mindset was just needed to be changed. It was unworkable, unsustainable, and it plundered too many people. So he changed all of that. And he only gave them their land back once they got it right. And for the next, 
you know, 100 odd years, they were pretty good until they sank back into it again. So that's why we infiltrate to remediate. Wow, that's so good. That's so Let good. me jump in here, uh, Chris, yeah. as well. And just to make sure people know as they're listening that, I don't know if you said it, I might not have listened to the intro there, right, Chris, but you know, you're listening to a man who's essentially CEO of billion dollar more company comp slash companies. And so you're talking, it's, it's just important to know when you're listening, uh, who you're listening to. And just, again, the blessing for me is to hear someone at that level speak with intentionality of how he's trying to splice in the kingdom of God in a very practical way on his mountain of business and economy. And by him mentioning the other mountains as well, there's just, it's a foundational reality that once someone gets into the billion dollar category, they do become de facto influencers of all the mountains because it's just, just, just what happens. It's just what happens at some level or another, there is going to be, whether it's from the resource capability, the influence capability, the ability to do that. So um, in, even in the, few minutes we'll have here today and and plus the lecture your converse you know the message you he calls them lectures um his is uh magna carta his brief magna carta that he will get for our <laughs> event y'all need to be aware that you know uh he has so many more resources and they're so valuable because of who he is and his experience and the intention that we're not talking about okay a man who's just successful in business and so how are you successful in business? This is a, this is a man, you, I just picked it up so quick as, as well, how he's processing how to bring the kingdom in a practical way into these areas of life. And so what you hear today is just teaser. And I'm sure I'm already stepping into what you would be sharing, uh, Chris. But even we should go ahead and know his um his website and and so, something more. Do you have that, Chris, already? Did yeah, absolutely. Know? So so um, we'll put this in the show notes as well. But if you go to kingdominvestors.com.au, um, it's .com.au, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, .com.au, um, you can find information about the Kingdom Investors part of what we're talking here, which is the market, a global marketplace ministry, which Dave is, um, does incredible, um, Dave and others, but incredible teaching um, that talks about, um, you know, at the highest, at the highest level, understanding what God's way is for marketplace and then how in a practical way to implement that, which is just... Um, you know, just throughout all of the things that Dave says is is very practical and useful. He's not giving these ethereal uh, concepts that just seem only right to someone that's very successful, but he has been in all the of the different places and has, has spent time there. So, yeah, just definitely kingdominvestors.com.au, and we will put that in the show notes as well so you can click on it real easy. But if you're, you know, want to make a note, that's how you find his information. But... I love this concept of practically, purposefully going into these different mountains of influence and not, uh, I love the way you said that, not killing everybody, not taking them now out, or maybe not obviously killing them, but just getting them out, but helping shift mindsets. That is such a big difference from a lot of people think is we need to get these guys out and you're saying, well, we may need to get them out, but before we know that, we should try to, um, you know, sh uh, help them see the truth, see what God's, you know, method is. Can you speak more into that? Yeah, certainly. So the, the obvious obvious um, analogy to that is salvations. Okay, we we all, we all want salvations. We want everybody work, worshiping the one true God. So that's the same uh, objective. If you're going into an enemy camp, you want to get them saved. If you're going into the world, you want to get them sa saved. If you're going to the marketplace, which is a secular marketplace, you want to get them saved. But just getting them saved isn't going to bring the kingdom of God into the earth. If you got a million people saved tomorrow and did nothing else, you just have a million hypocrites. Okay, so we've got... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> You've got to bring the gospel of the kingdom in to back it up and to change the way they do stuff. And we've really come short on that. And I say we, I'm, I'm talking about 2,000 years of this, you know. We, we've come short of bringing the gospel of the kingdom as, as, as is interpreted by the Lord 
what does that look like on earth? So if we're going to change people's hearts and minds uh, and, the, and the things they do, then we need to remediate. We, we've got to infiltrate and remediate. And that's the, the whole logic behind it, because if we don't, they're just going to carry on doing the same thing. And it's the kingdom of the devil, but just with a bunch of hypocrites in, in the middle of it. We've got 2.4 billion Christians on earth, and there's still an awful lot going wrong, and it shouldn't be that way. So that's the, I, I guess, the closest analogy that I can come to. And there's wow. so many ways of doing it that we, we should be doing it on every mountain. And it was just so common in the, in the Bible. It's, it's, a, it's a, a mindset of what we had before. Let, let's just take a quick example here. We've got all this stuff going on in the world at the moment. You know, Russia and the Ukraine, uh, wokeism. Prior to that, you know, someone stole the election in the U.S. And there's so much stuff going on in the world. And we look at that, and I think I mentioned this last year at Hub Nation. You know, I stand back and I look at this and I think, so, so what, what happened to trigger all of this? Why did God either allow it or right. engineer it? He's sovereign, right? He's in charge. So for some reason, he either allowed it or he engineered it. And why did he do that? And I think, well, obviously what he had prior to this, he wasn't satisfied with. Otherwise, right. he wouldn't do that. So then let's, let's look at that and see, so what do we need to change prior to, let's say, let's pick a, a point in time, prior to the election getting stolen, if you like. <clears throat> what, what was wrong when you had a, you know, a, probably one of the better presidents in the States, let's focus on the States. He was creating jobs. He was creating SMEs more so than, you know, hundreds of percent more than the Obama administration ever created. And here he is, and then he gets ousted. So what's all wrong? What do we need to fix? And what's the strategy to right, fix that? Right. We're business people. We don't want to do stuff that doesn't work. We, we need right. strategies. We need a business plan. And if we don't have that, well, then we're just going to be in five, ten years' time <clears throat> doing the same thing, fighting the same battle. So I look at that and I say, okay, Something was wrong. I reckon it's greed. I reckon greed and self-centeredness was driving everything on this planet, and it needed to be changed. Here's an excellent example. We've got so much going on. You've got a whole, you know, the, the, the whole BLM movement misinterpreting what's going on, but they, they obviously have a grievance. Let's address all these things. Let's infiltrate them and remediate them and provide solutions. And that's what we did. When we had to decommunize terrorists who had been abducted from what was then Rhodesia, the breadbasket of Africa, beautiful economy. Yes, it wasn't the perfect, none of them are, but it was just awesome for everybody there. So right. the Russians and the Chinese came in, abducted these guys who were quite happy, took them to Russia and China, trained them up as terrorists, and but trained them into communism, changed their ideology. Right. And then they came back as vicious terrorists. Well, we had to go in, infiltrate them, and convert them back and show wow. them a better way and show them the benefits of a better way and then prove the concept, okay? So I, I can't go too deep into how, the, the, how that worked, but the point is we can do that now in, in our spiritual battles with what's going on in the world. And we prove that the kingdom of God is better by, by proving human flourishing and universal prosperity, all the benefits of the kingdom of God, the, the goodwill the, to all mankind, the peace, the great joy that was announced when Jesus was born. That's what's missing. And that's right. what we should prove up. Right. That's wow. how we do it. That's how we do it. As so business good. People. That's so good. Johnny, I feel like you just, you're itching. You got something. Well, yeah, you know, I just love what he's saying. And there's kind of you know, the language Jesus brought. And it was just so interesting, even the way he's introduced that John the Baptist says, uh, repent, the kingdom of God is here. Jesus then followed up, says, repent, the kingdom is here. And when John the Baptist is talking about it, it was the king that was there. And the same thing when Jesus was saying the kingdom is here, the kingdom, uh, you know, it was Jesus that was there. And then you go to the scripture that says, uh, you know, seek you first the kingdom of God. And then you hear the one, love the Lord your God first above everything. And so a question starts developing. Okay, well, what's the priority? Is it the king or the kingdom? Which one? Because it's seek first and he's first. But, well, you know, which and you announce the kingdom, but then the king shows up. And that's a revelation in itself. And it goes into just what David's talking about right now. And it's kind of, it seems the obvious, but it's it's the growing area right now for the body of Christ. The area we need to mature in is we have parts of the body of Christ who've embraced the kingdom in some way, and some that have embraced the king, but this thing of them coming together, the king comes with his kingdom. 
They're like this candy cane. They come together. There is, there, there, there's no such thing as the king without his kingdom. And what I mean by that is we've sold the idea that souls, 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 personal transaction, that's good enough. Well, if right. you know yeah. the king, that's not good enough for him yeah. because yeah. he comes with his way of doing things. Yeah. And if his way of doing things doesn't come in very practical, what we're talking about, the seven mountains, then, uh, you know, you haven't really accomplished anything. And so we've celebrated Christian transactions and then called it, you know, the kingdom came and we saw a thousand souls came. It doesn't necessarily mean the kingdom came seeing a thousand souls saved right. if it was only transactional. Right. It's only yeah. when it shifts into out of this transaction are going to be those who reflect the king's way of doing things. Wow. The character, the servanthood, the power, the presence, the solutions. And so we really are in this desperate need. And I know that's what Dave's doing, what he's trying to do through all uh, his teaching and training and lectures and everything he does is how do we advance the full kingdom? Well, it's just the kingdom. The kingdom gets advanced when the king and yeah. his better ways. It's not just his ways. It's not just principles of how you do things. Because if you separate that from the king, you've again, you've blown you you've blown the, the the heavenly equation of the king and his kingdom come together. Right. Yeah. Wow. Man, that's so good. I like the way, Dave, that you said it. I think I think I got it right. If you just convert 2,000 people, but you don't teach them uh, kingdom ways, then you've only created 2,000 hypocrites. Is that how yeah. you said it? That's so, so spot on. Can you, can you press into that? Like from a practical standpoint, how – so I think there's these two camps, and I'm probably going to offend somebody, but there's these two camps, and the one camp is kind of like, hey um, – what we need to do is we need to get people saved. And that's really the only thing that matters. As soon as they're saved, then we've done our job. And then there's another camp that's like, okay, but we got to actually accomplish things. And what I hear you saying is actually, these are all, it's a continuous spectrum. There isn't a either or, but one in and of itself is not completing really an accurate picture of God's kingdom. Is that, is that kind of what you guys are both going after? Yeah, exactly. If you look at the great Reinhard Bonker, and his crusades in Africa, and millions of people attending, millions of people giving their lives to the Lord, but no follow-up. And by the next two weeks, they're all back into voodoo, and, and there's a crucifix next to, you know, a witch doctor's uh, bones, and next to this, next to that in their houses. And I come from Africa, I, and, and I'm, a, I'm literally a white black guy when I'm in Africa. I know the customs and everything, you know, I can in, right. infiltrate and, and work with the tribes. So I saw it as a kid growing up, and then I saw it afterwards. So, and that's not a, a blight on Reinhardt. He was right. just doing his assignment, okay? Right. But after him, uh, you guys know Beren Gilfillan from ISOM, International School of Ministry. So Beren was, was Reinhardt's television producer for many years, and he was with Reinhardt on all those crusades. And Beren's from Africa too. He's from South Africa. And he watched exactly what I saw, and he said, well, this is not good enough. We have to follow up. And that's right. why... Right. He stood he then built ISOM as, as a discipleship for, you know, what was going on so that he could stop this, wow. this uh, attrition back into, you know, into polytheism that was going on there. So if you, if you look at countries like, and I'm not shy to mention them because I want them to change, and I, I speak yep. there often, but there's places like Nigeria that is one of the most Christianized nations in the world, but it's one of the most corrupt nations in the world, mm -hmm. Jakarta. You know, the city of Jakarta in Indonesia, 70% of the businesses in Jakarta are Christian, even though it's the biggest Muslim country in the world. And yet the city is so corrupt, you yeah. know. And when I was in Lebanon last, you know, is a few years ago now, I've lectured there a lot. But I just watched as, and Lebanon's got a large percentage of Christians, Orthodox and, and, and a small amount of evangelicals. But the point is they were, they were awash with refugees from Syria. In fact, it was nearly half of the population. It's certainly wow. just over, yeah, nearly half, about 40%, plus 40% of their population were Syrian refugees who were desperate for an income. Okay, so they would, the, the, the business people, who are a lot of Christians, would employ them for next to nothing because they were desperate. They'd work for anything. Right. They would fire all of their qualified people, okay, because they cost more. Let's get all this cheap labor and exploit the cheap labor by paying them just enough to eat. And they're happy because now they've got food and they've got a roof over their head, but they haven't got any money to spend. So the economy is going to collapse. And it did. Right. Right. Okay? It sacked all the people who were paying their mortgages, who are holding the banks up, who are holding retail up. They sacked them all in the name of profit, greed. Yeah. 
and, and the whole place collapsed. So this, these are Christians, and we have to change that. We've got to get into the heads of these people and say, dude, your short-term greed has destroyed the yeah. you know, your short-term profit driven by greed has destroyed the economy. It, it imploded. Wow. They were rioting, and it went crazy. And we told them that. I was lecturing to the Lebanese government and said, guys, this is what's coming. And it was only six months later it came. Yeah. So the point I'm making is the gospel of the kingdom changes that. We sit with those people, and it's counterintuitive. Okay, you, you've got to care in business. You've got to share in business. You've got to look after all your stakeholders in your company and, and even your opposition. Your opposition must become your fraternity. You've got to work with everyone. They, there might be Christians who have an opposing business. Are you now going to take them out of business so you can have more? That can't work. It's not sustainable. It's not God's way. Boaz didn't do that. You know, it, it just Jesus didn't do it. It's a case of we must fix all of this you know, this Babylonian rubbish that permeates the mountain of economics and change the system. And that's what we've done. That's what we do at KI. KI is not an investment thing. It's just badly named. It's a marketplace ministry whereby we teach and prove and the kingdom of God and then introduce strategies to change the mountains, to infiltrate and remediate those mountains. Wow. You know, let me just jump in there, Chris, because that's so good. And, you know, there's that's the, the wording the Lord used in his first message to us as to what our influence is supposed to be. You are the salt of the earth and then you are the light of the world. David mentioned earlier that, you know, we're not there. Even people get the wrong idea on the seven mountains. Yeah. We're coming to take over and kick everybody off. It's, it's not, it's bad wording at minimum and bad processing. If that's what someone is actually processing in their mind as well, because if you think about what salt is and what light is salt, especially for biblical purposes was a preserver <clears throat> you are the preserver of your society it was also a healer so salt was more valuable um, to them than for us that's why they would pay even their legions in, in salt and we get the word salary and all that kind of stuff so you are the salt so you are to come and bring you're to preserve and heal the environment so other one everyone can function so even unbelievers unbelievers can function in that environment if they'll embrace it and be a part of it right and then you are the light Light is bringing transparency. In neither case, you know, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't say you're the. Uh, I don't even know what to call him. The uh, the terminator of 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 this area of society. That's right, not right. what you're there. It's blow things up and blow people up. You bring his better ways of doing things, and they're actually when he is lifted up, uh, he draws all men to him. They are they're they're literally. That which makes things operate in the best way possible anyway wow. and so once we once we get that and understand it it's it's uh it's just huge and i just you know just take a second more what dave is just bringing to just you know the abundance of christians who who can raise their hands and and become believers and then um and then think that it's okay to be corrupt uh, and and uh, that you know, the main thing is well, we're advancing the cause of Christianity. I remember an actual politician from a country in South America asking me and say, "Could you tell me?" He says, "I've been offered ten thousand dollars to do a vote this way, but they said they'll favor the church and all this kind of way and make it easier for the church and all these kind of things." And I mean, what do you think? This I'm, I'm thinking about that. And I was like, "Well, if you do, the moment you accept that bribe, you are now an advancer of the other kingdom." Right. And that part of the equation is what we've we've been seriously lacking in. And even our discipleship, I'll just, you know, have this conversation with David another time as well. Unfortunately, even when we do good follow up with discipleship, it's general discipleship of how to function in a church or church environment. And it's about foundational doctrines instead of the type of discipleship. David was just giving some discipleship right there on specifically the mountain of business and the economy right about caring for people win-win scenarios uh bottom line caring for all the shareholders like just in those few words he began to say he was talking mountains he was going into mountain specific discipleship yeah, that's, right. that's what we lack that's what part of our assignment missions do the best we can to try to bring mountain specific discipleship understanding so that we can bring the kingdom while we claim to be followers yeah of, uh, wow that's so good anyway that's, that's so good uh, david i'm loving what you're saying anyway yeah so dave um on that note we, you know we're kind of we're getting close to um the out of time but i do want to go into this 
kind of one area. So because people aren't going to be super, that are listening to this might not be super familiar with what Kingdom Investors does. One of the things that you talk about a lot, you've alluded to several times, which is God's will, God's way. It's very simple, very obvious when you say it out loud. Unfortunately, it's not implemented in a practical way a lot of the time. I would love it if you just kind of lay us a quick foundation. How is What does that mean and how does it apply in the, in a, just a simple practical sense, you've alluded to it some and referenced it some, but just set the stage for people that aren't really familiar, um, but need to know about what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. So when we talk about God's will, God's way, God's will essentially, um, let, let's go past salvation. Okay. So you're saved. Let's assume you're saved. Then thereafter, then what, what, what is God's will for you personally as an individual? Um, is it to just be a generic Christian or does he have an assignment or plural assignments for you? Did he put you on this earth for a reason or just to be a generic random? Okay, well, obviously, every one of us has a purpose. We are put here for a reason and it's up to us to establish what that is. What is my assignment? Okay, so I'm, I'm doing my assignment. It's to build a, a significant corporation so that I can have the influence to teach and influence to change culture. So my, my business is just a tool. My assignment is to change culture, okay, and, and introduce strategies that do it and, and head that up and, and execute that. So that's my assignment. Noah, you know, you've got to build an ark. Esther, there's, there, there's a genocide coming. Go and make supplication to the king. Joseph, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a famine coming. Go and sort it out. So those are all assignments, and they're big, epic assignments. Lots of assignments are small, uh, but they're just as important as the big ones okay so that's god's will we have to do it god's way if we don't do it god's way that they have to go together if we don't do it god's way it ain't going to work you know there was this Im immense assignment of the crusades okay right. we need to go and liberate the holy land uh, constantinople was under direct threat from the, the the islamic hordes in those days okay and so the the state the city states of europe formed these great armies and marched towards the holy land that's God's will. They followed the cross, crusade, following the cross, and they lifted the cross up and off they went. Well, along the way, they plundered Europe and they created, they deliberately killed parents who had awesome kids, good looking kids. So they could traffic the kids, had the biggest children's trafficking thing. We haven't matched it yet. Okay. And the point being, they didn't do it God's way and they lost. They won two out of about 11 significant crusades they lost a lot of little ones as well so at the end of the day we lost the holy land because they did god's will they didn't do it god's way and the last thing god wanted is replacing the holy land with this lot these clowns right. that were killing everybody and trafficking in children wow. so that's what we're talking about um th there's there's one other little topic i'd like to cover off when you're ready if you like before we close yeah, but go for it please. no we'll go just dive in okay so that's what God's will, God's way is all about. If, if we just quickly drop back to the um, infiltrate to remediate, which is the, the, the lecture that I'm uh, doing for, for the conference, um, I, 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 I mentioned in that lecture the concept of uh, God applies enormous favor when you actually do this. When you infiltrate to remediate, you, you're actually taking a lot more risk than, than generic Christianity, okay? You're actually going in and you're infiltrating a hostile environment, essentially. So that requires a lot more favor and God applies that favor. He's done it to us on every occasion that we've done this. We've done this about six times. I think I only gave one example in my lecture, but the if you look in the Bible, just look look at uh, Zacchaeus, okay? He, Jesus infiltrated, obviously, the, the whole system, the taxation system in, in, in first century Palestine. It was so corrupt. And that's why he got Levi converted, um, uh, who became the Matthew, the, the apostle Matthew. Um, but ultimately, he went after Zacchaeus because he had such a big impact on the Jericho region. In order to do that, he infiltrated. And if you look at Luke 17, 18, and 19, you'll see how he did it. Okay, it wasn't just a random Zacchaeus sitting in a tree and Jesus says, hey, dude, come, I want to abide at your pad. It could have been Buddha saying that. It could have been, you know, Muhammad saying that. He, Zacchaeus needed to know that Jesus was the son of God before he was going to give up everything. Point being, Jesus infiltrated. Zacchaeus was converted to the extent that he injected massive capital, seed capital, back into the city of Jericho, which was a starving mess. 
Zacchaeus was in such trouble. He's the chief tax collector. He's taxed these people off the planet so that they are so poor. They're right on the very urge of an insurrection. If he tries to tax them another dollar, they're going to rise up against him. But if he doesn't supply the temple and Rome with tax, they're going to chop his head off because they're going to say, where's all the money gone? How come you're rich and, and these are poor and we are not getting our tax? So he's got this huge dilemma. Well, Jesus converts him and he goes back in and, and changes the whole system. With, and, and you got to imagine this when, when, when funding comes into a city and it's, and it's capital to be divided up amongst everybody that this guy stole, he's now giving it back plus 50% of the rest of his wages in the future. This is an enormous incentive right. uh, for small to medium enterprise. And don't forget, these are Jews, okay? They're the kings of SME. And they started businesses again, and they're going to tell everyone, man, we got the only place in the, in the whole of the Holy Land here, the whole of Palestine, that's actually a, uh, got an, a righteous taxation system. So everybody flocked in. And, of course, Jericho became this incredibly prosperous place, and it fixed everything for Zacchaeus. He wasn't going to get his head chopped off. Now he could tax righteously much more because there was much more to tax, and he could pay everybody. So the favor that came with all of that is it's uh, you can't quantify it it's and we've had that I, I go i think i'll give an example in my lecture and that happens over and over and over it's not a one off okay it, they all go hand in hand wow man that is so powerful um I I, that is so powerful i mean for those of you that are watching and aren't familiar you know what dave teaches and what he carries are so practical and so useful so you definitely owe it to yourself to go to the kingdom investors website and check it out and sign up i just 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 go sign up just do it kingdom uh, investors.com.au um johnny I, i'd love to take this time and transition just for a minute if you could speak to the event so dave hodgson is one of the amazing speakers that's going to be at this event that's coming up uh, very soon um maybe johnny if you could just spend a minute or two and talk about that event and then um i can um you know some add some of the particulars on how to register and so forth but i think that'd be super powerful to put some context around what we've been talking Talking about yeah we're really excited about it because the lord really has given us uh, amazing speakers such as david and again telling you when you have someone who runs a, a billion dollar uh, corporation and and has companies in i think nine countries and multiple companies you're talking about a guy with not a little bit of experience you're talking right. about someone and then you look at him you know, he, he looks good for his age and all that kind of stuff, but he's, he's not a kid. He's not 30. He's been around. He's been exposed to everything. And so uh, there's the initial exp uh, being exposed to who he is and what he does. And then ongoing, the, the, the resources, materials, discipleship he has. We also have we have the Lewis family and Charlie Lewis. You know, I believe they have 25,000 employees and they have uh, we've known them for many, many years. And so. And they run everything. Everything is called kingdom something in their in their business and in their world as Good. well. And so what he's we a have, of KI, isn't he? Uh, pardon? Charlie is a member of KI. They hold KI and they're a chapter leader. Uh, oh, awesome. That's yeah. see, I, I may have told him about you actually years ago now that I think about it. But he may have found <laughs> you any, uh, found you anyway. So you have. Um, and then we can keep on going. It's both for, for business and for government. Yeah. We're bringing you practitioners. And so yeah. you have people that not necessarily you've heard about them in the, uh, you know, a conference circuit and, and or on. And that's the thing. They're, these are not ones that have big names and big followings necessarily. Uh, some of them have bigger than other ones, bigger audiences and all that. But they're so valuable for those of you looking to step into being practical reformers. And that's what we're trying to uh, we're personally have in, in, embraced it. And we want, you know, we want those of you who have uh, who have embraced the idea of being reformers, not just being complainers and, and not just being, you know, prayers right. and intercessors is great. But we need nine to five practitioners of the kingdom yeah. of God. And so we, we want to expose you to those who are having some level of success in what they're doing. And it's very varied, as Chris knows, very varied. Um, um, the background in both it's, it's two specific mountains, but it's, you know, anywhere from a city planner 
uh, to someone running for secretary of state to, and I don't even know what all the staff came, they're not coming to my mind right now, but we have those that are at all levels. We interact with presidents, prime ministers, governors, and congressmen and senators all the time as well. So we want to give you practical understanding based on existing practitioners. That's right. All it can do, even if you can't do it exactly the same in your world, in your nation, your city, it's something that you can uh, begin to step into. And it's amazing how quickly the Lord will be, uh, will accelerate your own favor, your own opportunities, your own open doors. If you'll allow yourself to be uh, exposed to these who are already who are already carrying this pioneering reformation assignment. Yeah, come on, come on. Well, um just a couple practical things for this particular event. Uh, again, for Dave Hodgson's information, kingdominvestors.com.au, you definitely want to do that. We'll put that in the show notes, like I mentioned. For this particular event, you can register at the restore7.org website. You can come in person in Bend, Oregon. It'll be in Bend, Oregon. You can also attend online. And if you've not attended one of these conferences that the uh, Restore 7 team has put on, they are not just a Zoom call with the camera in the back. This is a highly interactive experience designed from the ground up to be an amazing teaching experience for the people that are online so that's not an afterthought like it is designed to be a great experience because we want to remove all those barriers so you can really hear from amazing speakers like dave hodgson so dave thank you so much for pouring into this um johnny as always it's amazing to have you um pouring in wisdom as well i'm just going to take one minute and pray over um, a couple different things and then we can we can let you guys go so father thank you so much for today thank you so much for dave Dave Hodgson, his team, and everything that they're doing at Kingdom Investors. I would like to just pray over the people that are members of KI right now, that you would just continue to give them the strategy, continue to give them the insight that they need in their particular spheres of influence, whether they're in business, whether they're in government, whatever they are, that you would just continue to give them the strategy and tools that they need. Um, Father, I'd like to just pray over Dave and his family. There's a lot of um, crazy things happening in the world. And then on top of that, there's crazy weather and flooding in his home area. So I ask that you would just bless him and his family and what they're um, dealing with and also their ministry, that you would just bless the ministry um, of Paladin Corporation, everything, all the different verticals and businesses that they're working with, as well as Kingdom Investors. And we just ask everyone that's hearing this right now would um, continue to receive insight and that they would know you know, what action steps they need to take, the practical things that they need to do to go forward. So Father, we just say yes and amen to what you're doing right here, right now on the earth. We just want to say yes and amen to what you're going to do at this conference. And we just say thank you for providing the amazing people to speak your will, your way into what's happening at this conference and even on this podcast. So thank you for that, Father. We love you. We want to serve you with the way that we handle ourselves in uh, the sphere of society that we're in. And we just say thank you for that opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dave, thank you so much again. Super excited that you're going to be one of the speakers at this conference. It's going to be awesome. Always pumped to hear what you've got to say. I always learn. I get, I like get fresh pages out of my notebook to take notes because I know I'm going to learn a ton. So <laughs> really it's a great that. pleasure. And it's an honor to be at that uh, to talk for you guys. What a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. All right. We'll see you guys on the next one.